After close shaves? Oh, I guess that one where I was walking in front of the ridge there and that uh, 88 was firing at me. It's probably about that and that hand grenade going off right alongside of me. Actually, that hole was only about yay deep. And when I was trying to get to the bottom of it, I could see my rump kind of silhouetted against the sky. And I thought, well, I'm going to catch it for sure. And I don't know whether the pack saved me or whether I was down a little lower than I thought, but uh, the guy I was hit was on the other side of me and uh, he was kind of a little heavy set and I think his rump stuck up over the rock and that's how he got it. <clears throat> but he asked me, should I go back? And I said, well, that's up to you. I didn't know how bad he was hit. And of course, I was his squad leader and he was able to go down our side and avoid the Germans that were attacking us because they hadn't circled around on that side yet. How do you go down Reaver Ridge? Well, you go down in a hurry. <laughs> so, but I mean, it's so steep that it's not a easy... Well, I don't know how he got down, but uh, there was a pretty good trail up there. I don't know whether he found that trail or not. I say I didn't see him till long after the war, so... Now, you went up and down Reaver Ridge many times. How did you find going down? Oh, uh, not bad. You know how sometimes it's easier to climb than Yeah, to I know. Did you find that to be true? Well, the hardest place was to say where... Uh, C Company's route there, and and uh, I think we used a rope going down that the night I was up there. But when we eventually went down, of course, uh, we had plenty of time. It wasn't like we were under fire or anything, and went down in the daytime. But all the scouting I did was at night, you know, so that made it harder. Right. You did you feel like? Uh... All that scouting prepared you better for what was to come? Oh, I think so, yeah. I mean, I knew more about it than anybody else in the company, so. And our route, the uh, B Company route, I was very confident about that. Uh, in fact, one of the local Italians kind of put me onto that. And uh, when I was over there a couple of years ago, I met his cousin. And uh, all the streets and all are named after families. and. Uh, I can't just name this guy's name right now, but uh, uh, when the local Italians, I can't say enough for them because without their cooperation, we could never have done this, you know, in a surprise manner. But anyway, when they knew what we were doing is scouting for trails, and I said, we wanted to go up Cababuso. He said, well, you should see so-and-so. and. -so. and uh, Sure enough, when I, they put me in touch with him, and he was going over the ridge himself regularly and stealing the German shoes and causing as much havoc as he could. And uh, all the Italians in this area were very anti-German. So he pointed the trail out to me and told me where machine gun nests were up on top and what to avoid. And so, I was able to lead the company in a, up there in a way to minimize encounters, you know, and to get there. So, really, uh, he was a big help to us. When you go back today, what is the response of the Italians today? Oh, they're still very appreciative of us. I mean, they, they're more appreciative of us than uh, anybody in this country ever was. <laughs> so. They, uh, we actually liberated them. And the Germans were pretty rough on those people up there in the mountains. There was one village up the river there, up the Dardagno, I think it was. Uh, there was a village up there that uh, they accused somebody in that village of spying or espionage or something. And they, the story they told us, they rounded up all the men in the village and shot them. So the local Italians were very much on our side. Was that Gaggio Montana? Uh, no. Eh, just a small village. I can't think of the name of it now. Now, when you were out for hepatitis, did you rejoin at Lake Garda then? Uh, no. Uh, I didn't rejoin them until they were up on the 
Yugoslav line. Oh, I see. Well, you were lucky. Yep, <laughs> I'm right. Well, I think I think you paid your uh, paid your dues on River Ridge. Well, I have a feeling that uh, I wouldn't have made it otherwise, because our first platoon was supposed to be the assault platoon, and being the platoon sergeant of the assault platoon is not really a very safe job. Where were they that, where was that assignment? At Riva? Well, it was after, uh, after Sas Malera. As I say, I was a squad sergeant then. So I never really uh, was in any attacks after I became the platoon sergeant. It was about a week or two after that. Well, we moved to a forward line there, but then a couple weeks later, I came down with hepatitis, and uh, apparently the Germans in that area had also c contracted a lot of it. And several men from B Company ended up in the same ward. I just didn't feel like eating, and one of the medics noticed that I'd missed a couple chows, and uh, I said, well, I'm just not hungry. He said, well, you go on sick call. And that's when I found out I had hepatitis. And uh, apparently, uh, if you don't get me medical treatment for that, well, you can die from it. And apparently, two or three people in our ward did. So it, and there's, there isn't any medicine for it, but all you can do is rest your liver. And we, we just laid in bed for a couple of weeks and weren't even allowed to hardly go to the bathroom. But anyway, that, uh, there were about six men, I think, from B Company in that ward. Did you miss staying with your squad? Yeah, I kind of missed the end of it, and, uh, but probably might have saved my life too, so. How did you feel about being away from your men? Well, we kind of felt like we were kind of shirking our duty, I guess. And uh, I would have liked to have been in on the whole thing, but as I say, it, you know, I could have been killed too, so. The fellow Rose I was telling you about, the machine gunner, he was one of them that was back at the hospital. I can't think of his first name. I don't know whatever happened to him, but I say he was one of the ones that you could count on. Did you ever think that you would maintain lifelong contact with these people? Didn't even think about it. No, we we didn't think about much except next week. <laughs> I mean, that's about as far ahead as we would think, and that's one reason why you see everybody kind of laughing and happy in that picture is, you know, we were going to live another few days anyway, so. I mean, that's kind of the attitude you get into, and it's not like you're scared to death all the time or act like you are. Whatever chance there is for some humor and joking around, why, you take. Do you think that the tenth Mount, being in the 10th Mountain Division shaped your life? Oh, it's hard to say. I think... Uh, being in the Army, I don't know that necessarily at 10th Mountain, but I think that was probably the uh, best unit I could have been in. But uh, just being in the Army and in combat, I think, shapes your life a certain way. How did it shape your life? Oh, it gave me more, more confidence that I could handle whatever, you know, life kind of threw at me. Uh, I think being able to kind of see through those kind of things and living through it, and especially if you felt that you did your share, and, you know, I think it's a confidence booster. Now, after Mount Belvedere, what did you do after that? <sighs> you know, it's hard to put everything into... Uh, you seem to remember the highlights, but uh, there's a lot of moving around, and uh, we went back for a 
shower and a change of clothes at some point, uh, a little short rest period. But uh, of course, you know, a lot of people don't realize is that uh, you spend very little time right on the line. The Army has a way of two units up and one back. You know, so you've got uh, like two regiments on the front and one back and then in each of those regiments there's three battalions and you've got two battalions up and one back or one up and two back you know and then within each battalion you have some companies on the line some behind so uh, there's always very few people right up on the line and they've got this uh, reserve back there so if any breaches in the line there's somebody to to fill in and if you were on front lines all the time you wouldn't last a week or two you know so there was a lot of going back and forth and uh, as I say I remember the highlights but I don't remember all the back and forth I know we did get some relief here and there in your estimation what how would you quantify the spirit of the tent there is such a thing. Well, uh, we were pretty damn gung-ho. I mean, I trained at Camp Hale for at least two years. I was there at least two winters. And I was ready to get out of there. Go to the, I mean, a lot of people joined the Canadian Air Force or transferred to the paratroops or, I mean, we were kind of overtrained in a way. And by the time we got overseas and we were just itching to get into battle and you know we had a high esprit de corps and uh, I just think we had a lot of a lot of self-confidence. Uh, can you think of anything that later on you'll say darn it I wish I had said this? Well I can't think of anything now <laughs> maybe later I will. <laughs> Later. <laughs> well, how about what does it mean to you to be 10th? To be a, from the 10th? Right. Oh, I'm proud of having been part of it, you know. I think in a way we've been over uh, publicized and I'm sure if I was in one of the other divisions I'd be a little jealous of all the attention we've gotten and all the monuments and the roads named after us and but you know, we were kind of Johnny come lately was over there, and we're getting more than our share of credit, I feel. Um, when you were in battle, did you think you would survive? That's a hard question to answer. You, you convince yourself that you are, but in the back of your mind, you know what the odds are. So you kind of live each day like it might be your last. How did being in the 10th Mountain shape your attitude towards war? Well, a lot of times war is necessary, that's all. I don't know that, uh, I don't know that changed my attitude any for or against. I mean, nobody likes war, but it seems like it's been necessary from the, from the, you know, from the time we fought the British. Did, and you, did you have any sense that you guys were special? I thought we were a good unit. I don't know that we were special. Uh, of course, everybody probably thinks their own unit is pretty good, you know. I mean, we were proud of our outfit. Okay. Can you think of anything else that you'll wish you had said? <laughs> no. I, of course, I don't know what you're going to use this for, what context and... Uh, well, if there was something that you, you know, had wished uh, later on that you could pass along about about the 10th, what would it be? Uh, 
That's a hard question. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm just glad that's the unit I was in. That's about the only thing I can say. I I think we had we saw enough combat to know what it's about, and we didn't see so much that everybody got ended up being shot up and. You know, it was a good out, outfit to have been in. And we really lucked out being sent back to the States early because we were going to go to the uh, Pacific Theater and then we were on the, on the water coming back is when they dropped the atomic bombs. So in a sense, we got over there last and came back first. And it's kind of hard to beat that. Although I could have stayed in Italy for a while longer. I mean, oh, I don't know, we were up in the mountains there, up in the Dolomites, and uh, uh, I got to know a local Italian there, and he was going to take me out on some hikes up in the mountains, and, you know, we were going to hunt Shamasi, and, uh, you know, I could, and then I had that, that trip lined up if I could have gotten on that, so, I mean, I didn't, didn't want to stay over there for months, but uh, I could have used another month over there. Could use another month over there right now. Yeah, and that's a beautiful area where we ended up. Yeah. You have to have a brand inspection to travel with an animal. Now this, tell me a little bit about where this photo was taken and when. Well, that was taken down near Vitti Chattico. I don't know exactly where, but it's right after we came down off River Ridge. And uh, we all lined up and I think Ed Thurridge probably took the picture. And you said that Ed Fancher, the fellow in the tall white hat there, took his camera up to River Ridge during the battle. Right. He had it with him, took some pictures up on top, and handed it to somebody else to take this picture. Now, how many people does this um, represent, and how many started out the trip? Well, I don't know. You can read the casualty numbers up there, but... I forget how many there were, but that's what's left. This is 86B. Well, it's uh, part of the most. It's most of the first platoon that was left, plus my squad of the second platoon, plus a machine gun squad from the weapons squad, and weapons these, platoon. And these would have been everybody from Route One and Route Two, then. No, no. Oh, just Route Two. No. No, it isn't everybody from Route 2 either. It's it just the oh, okay. first platoon of Company B okay. plus first squad of second platoon of Company B plus a rifle or a machine gun squad from the fourth platoon of Company B. It's most of Company B was still up on Capabuso. And this is about half of the number that Think about half. Well, that maybe again? maybe two thirds of the ones that went over there. I don't know what the casualty figures are, but they're on record. Mm -hmm. But if all the people from those uh, units attending were in attendance here, it would be double. It could be. Maybe like that. How come you guys are laughing so much? How much what? How come you're laughing so much? Well, I say we we're just joking around and happy to be back, I guess. But that's the way it was. You joked when you had a chance. There's one guy in there that kind of over near the right, he was always making jokes. See the he guy pointing? He probably said something. See the guy sort of pointing down on somebody else's hat? Oh, he was one of the, the guy he's pointing to is a jokester. You got it, Richard? Got it. Let me unplug me again.
right now we're moving on to slides from Bob Thompson and this is very rough hard to see but there's a flash of it that's Reva Ridge I think that's we were back of the line somewhere and we we're all dug in like groundhogs And I mean, when we had a chance to dig in, we dug in. Good foxhole? Yep. Oh, That's was it? not Reaver Ridge. Okay, that's one down. All right. What, uh, what's that say? It says Bob Thompson, uh, Casaliano, March 45. Okay. Let me Let's see. I always thought that was taken up on River Ridge. But I don't know who did the writing. I thought that was River Ridge, okay. Uh, the next one is a group shot, and you are. I think those are partisans. These are the partisans? Yeah. Here's a good look. Yeah, they're partisans. Okay, got it. This looks like almost a copy of what you thought was River Ridge. Take a look at this. I thought that was River Ridge. Actually, you could talk to Ed. And, uh, and that one might be River Ridge? He might know where these pictures were taken. This one? Looks to me that's to just be Belvedere, a right? countryside there. It could be Belvedere. Would you? You'd obviously have a good view of it. <laughs> so yeah, did Ed take I, these pictures? Yep. Ed Fancher took these. Yeah. And you know, he might not even have had the camera on River Ridge. I just know that that picture there was taken after we got down. But I 